ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Mmm, -hmm. you're going to love the big exciting news today. Now there are two brand new Betty Crocker cake mixes. There's chocolate malt and peanut delight. I'll bet you can hardly wait to try them. And I wouldn't blame you. They're just so good. Today, let me tell you about the chocolate malt. It's a wonderful new way to enjoy an old flavor that's a favorite with so many of us. There's honest-to-goodness delicious malted milk right in the mix. And, of course, there are all the other fine quality ingredients you choose yourself like famous soft-as-silk cake flour and pure vegetable shortening. And because it is a Betty Crocker cake mix, Mom knows it's the easiest way ever to bake a perfect cake. So next time Mom goes shopping, be sure to remind her to get that brand-new delicious treat, Betty Crocker's Chocolate Malt Cake Mix. You'll love it. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. Are you still there? Leaving the Lone Ranger at a camp near Cottonwood City, Tonto rode into town to buy supplies. Oh, Scott. Oh, Father. He knew that the sight of a heavily armed Indian would arouse suspicion, so he stowed his guns and cartridge belt in a saddlebag before he dismounted and joined a large group of idlers in front of a store. While he listened to the aimless conversation, Tonto noticed that the jail, a small adobe building, stood just across the street. Separated from the jail by several weed-grown lots was the office of the Cattlemen's Protective Association. The Indian studied it closely, then turned his eyes on an excited rancher who hurried toward the store. Fellas! Fellas, it came uh, right Jim Dillon's Bar 7 spread last night. Uh, uh, where'd you hear that, Lee? I got it from a Bar 7 man who rode over my way looking for the gang's trail. He said the sign winders killed another rider and drove a lot of Jim's cattle over a cliff. Nobody but homesteaders or sheep herders would do a thing like that. That's how I figure it, Steve. Yeah, it wouldn't have happened if Jim had joined the Cattlemen's Protective Association like the rest of us ranchers. Jim Dillon is one of the few cattlemen in the valley who've held out against joining. Yeah, he should have known better. Well, he and his daughter Ruth are mighty independent. Hey, look at that buckboard come. Yeah, that's Ruth Dillon driving. Jim's on the seat beside him. I never knew him to ride in a buckboard before. Well, he's been crippled up for a spell. A horse fell with him. Oh, oh there. Oh, oh, now. I'll jump out, Ned. Now, give me your cane and I'll help you down. Oh, well, hold on to the stick. Just give me a hand here. All right. There you are, Dad. Jim, we heard what happened last night. Those nesters. They had nothing to do with it, Jim. Then who did raid your ranch? You'll know later. I've got proof enough to hang the bomb. I'm going to turn it over to the sheriff right now. Come on, Ruth. All right, Dan. Let's take your off. Tonto, who was eager to learn Jim Dillon's secret, saw that he could not approach the jail without being observed by the curious crowd. As the others watched the rancher and his daughter, the Indian suddenly drew a knife, the only weapon he had retained. Brandishing it, he gave voice to a war chant and began dancing around a hitching pole. Hey! The engine. He's gone loco. I plug it. Don't shoot him, Steve. Here comes a deputy. What's going on here? The engine's doing a war dance. Here, you redskin. Give me that knife or I'll let daylight through you, Sammy. Uh, me, Sammy. Yeah. You take knife. I'm going to throw you into jail to cool off. That'll teach you to do your dancing on the reservation. Now get going. Ah, uh, me go. Hey. Meanwhile, 
while, two men had met on the second floor of the building which housed the headquarters of the Cattlemen's Protective Association. One was Lance Layton, who had organized the CPA. The other was Layton's assistant, Bill Strong. Paring an apple with a pocket knife, Layton asked, How did you find the situation in other parts of the territory before I called you back? Lance, there's no limit on how far we can go with our outfit. <laughs> Say, how come you call me back just to lead the raid on Jim Dillon's spread? Well, I couldn't trust any of our hired gunmen to manage it. There's one thing in your letter I didn't savvy. Yeah? What was that? I'll show you. What? Where in thunder is that letter? You... You mean you didn't burn it as I told you to? I kept it so I could check with you and make sure what you meant. But I... I haven't got it now. You fool. Hey, boss, Jim Dillon just went to the sheriff's office. Yeah, yeah, I expected that, Rusty. He said he had something that would prove who pulled the raid. The letter. Dillon's in the jail office now. I can see him through the window. He's taking a chair right in front of him. Yeah, then we still got a chance. Hey, what are you doing with that apple? Boring a hole in it. Now, I'll stick it on the muzzle of this ballot rifle here. There, you see how it fits? Oh, yeah, yeah, now, I see. Open the window a little. Take this rifle. I want you to plug Dillon... What's the apple for? To muffle the shot so it won't be heard outside this building. Can you aim with it on the muzzle? I can hit that fill in the jail office shooting from the hip. All right. I'm going to jail right now. Rusty, you're to shoot the moment you see that I'm inside. In the excitement, I'll try to get hold of that compounded letter. <laughs> As Leighton hurried toward the jail, Jim Dillon was saying... Jeff, the fellows who run the CPA have made fools of nearly everyone in the valley. What those letters should stand for is Crook's Protective Association. Now, looky here, Jim. You're going too far. Oh, so I am, am I? Well, I've got something that will back up my words in court. Uh, get in there, Redskin. Joe, uh, why in the blazes did you bring that Redskin in here? acting up across the street. I've got troubles enough without being bothered with him. Why am I out of town? You heard the sheriff, engine. Get back to your reservation and stay there. Uh, Having no other choice than to obey, Tonto moved reluctantly toward the door. But before he reached it, Lance Layton entered. Well, howdy, sheriff. Howdy, Lance. Uh, step up here and face Jim Dillon. Jim says he has evidence that you fellows who manage the CPA outfit are crooks. Well, he's lost his mind. Well, that's what I think. Where's your evidence, Jim? Right here in my... What was that? Look at that window. Bullet hole. Dad, what is it? He fell out of his chair. I'm shot. Dad. Uh... Oh, Dad. Oh, here, let me look at him, miss. There, I got his shirt off. Sheriff, please call the doctor. No, it's too late now. What? Your father's gone. Oh, no. No, it can't be. One of those hill fellas who raided his ranch must have got it. I didn't hear a shot, but it looks like the bullet came from that brush outside. Joe, get out there and look around. I'll gather up a posse. Right. I'll put the CPA boys on the case. He wasn't a member. Hey, you guys, you the street. Get your heart. Jim Dillon's been murdered. Miss, me feel pretty sorry for you. Me try to get put in jail to help your father. Where do you think he can carry evidence? I don't know. He didn't even tell me he had anything of the kind. Hey, sir, there's nobody in this bird. In uh, there go Possyman. Other people coming here. Me go now. Meanwhile, Lance Leighton had rejoined his confederates in the Protective Association's office. He was saying... Dylan didn't have that letter on him. I bet he didn't find it. He must have found something. When the sheriff asked him to show his evidence, he said something about it being right there, and his, and that's as far as he got. You told us his daughter was there. Maybe he was going to say she had it. Rusty, that's the answer. We'll have to get it away from her before the sheriff comes back, or she'll turn it over to him. Rusty, you watch her. Likely she'll go back to the ranch to break the bad news to her kin. If she does, go down to the corral. Bill and I'll be waiting there with the horses. Right. I'll take that pallet rifle with me. What for? <laughs> One more killing won't make it any worse for us. As the three crooks left the office, the lone ranger who had been alerted by the hue and cry of the departing posse left Silver and slipped into the main part of Cottonwood City to learn what had happened. Taking advantage of everything that offered concealment, he soon reached the chaparral-covered lot between the CPA building and the jail. There he met Tonto, who had been searching vainly for a trace of the killer. 
After the Indian had finished a quick report of all he had seen and heard, the masked man said, I'll help you make another search of this stick of tunnel. Well, better we start by wall of CPA office. Me not look there. Is anyone in the building? Mm, me not think so. Late and two other fellas leave a little while ago. Them locked door. All right, then come on. Cautiously working their way to the side of the office building, the masked man and Indian soon reached a point opposite the bullet-shattered window in the jail. Suddenly, the Lone Ranger bent forward and scooped something from the ground. Mm. What you find? A piece of apple with a very faint smudge of burned powder on it. Mm. What that mean? The killer used an apple to silence his gun. A potato or some other fruit or vegetable of that nature would have served as well. Did not see any sign that him stand here. He didn't. He couldn't have seen the lower part of the jail window because of the bushes. Mm, that's right. The only possible place from which he could have fired was the upper floor of the CPA building. Ah. Probably he stood well back in a room and shot through an open window. The powder blast and bullet shattered the apple. One piece fell here. And what do we do now? Try to find Miss Dillon. After she recovers from the shock of her father's murder, she may be able to remember something that will enable us to find the evidence of which he spoke. Get up! Get up! Get up! Let her go and buckboard. We'll stop her outside the town. Get Scout. I'll go after Silver. Uh. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Ever stop to think how much fun you can have with a blackboard? Why, you can play games on them, draw pictures, leave messages, practice spelling, all sorts of things. But here's the news. There's a blackboard on the back of the special Wheaties blackboard package at your grocer's right now. All you need to use on this blackboard is ordinary chalk, and you can wipe it off with cloth or a regular blackboard eraser and use it again and again. In fact, I think you're going to want several of these Wheaties blackboard packages. You know, so you can let your friends join in with the fun, playing tic-tac-toe or having drawing contests. Or maybe you'll want extra blackboard so you can save your own best drawings. You see, there's no extra charge for the blackboard. Nothing to do, nothing to send in. You just pay the regular Wheaties price. So look for the Wheaties package with the sign on the front that says Blackboard. That means there's one of these wonderful blackboards on the back, ready to use. Be sure to pick up several. They're at your grocer's right now. Ask for the special Wheaties blackboard package. Now, to continue, as the Lone Ranger and Toto ran for their horses, Rusty carried word of Ruth Dillon's departure to his waiting partners in crime. Throwing themselves into their saddles, the three killers guided their horses across country in an effort to head off the girl. A short time later, a young homesteader who was riding toward town met Ruth on the trail. Both pulled up. Oh, hello there. Whoa, whoa. Howdy, Ruth. Why, you've been crying. Dead, dead. 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 Murdered. Murdered right in the sheriff's office. The sheriff is out with a posse right now. The CPA gunman may be riding, too. I suppose they'll shoot any hill man on sight. Tim, I want you to go along with me to the ranch where you'll be sitting. Look, coming up the oh, trail. A masked man and an Indian. And I haven't any gun. Here's Dad's six shooter. Yeah, I got it. Don't be frightened. We won't harm you. Oh, silver. Oh, 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 Get your hands up. I'm covering you. You haven't had much experience with guns, my friend. Your gun isn't cocked. I could draw and fire while you're pulling back the hammer. Why? I forgot to thumb it. Why are you wearing that mask, mister? What do you want? Oh, him friend of mine, miss. Him want to talk with you. Oh, you're the Indian who was in the sheriff's office. Ah. You seem to want to help me. We both want to help you. We believe that the Cattlemen's Protective Association is being operated by crooks, just as your father did. In all probability, he was shot from the CPA office with the connivance of Lance Layton. But why? Apparently, the criminals were afraid your father would expose them. My friend Toto tells me that you know nothing about the evidence he was about to show the sheriff. That's the truth. Where do you think your father could have found the evidence? I've been thinking of that, too. This morning, I drove Dad out to the cliff where the cows and rider were killed. He, he walked around for a while, leaving me in the buckboard. When he came back, he said something about the association leaders being murderers, and, and then he told me to drive to town. Oh, Miss Dillon, will you and your friend lead us to the cliff? Yes, of course. Oh, Tim, put that gun away. Sure, I'll stick it inside my shirt. Get up! Come get on, up. get him! Get him up! Oh. An hour later, the Lone Ranger 
Ranger and Tonto were engaged in an intensive search along the top of the brush-fringed cliff. Ruth and Tim followed them as they moved ever farther away from the horses and buckboard, examining the earth, rocks, and shrubs. Tonto was saying, Oh, here. Let me see where him punch ground with cane. Oh, look. Look what we find. That's a lead cylinder. It's about a half inch thick and a foot long. Oh. And what it used for? Storekeepers once sold lead in the form of rods. A rod could be easily cut and melted into bullets. Now, Miss Dillon, did you ever see anything like this around your home? No, never. The only muzzle-loading gun on the place belonged to my grandfather, who died years ago. That was his cane my dad used. Mm. Well, that gives me an idea. I'd like to look at that cane. I'll get it for you. Come on, Tim. Come on, Tim. A few minutes later, Tonto looked up from the ground and observed... Boy, girl, coming back with cane. Why you want it? Because that cane dates back to a time when it was a common practice for men to carry loaded walking sticks. Because firearms were untrustworthy and hard to conceal. Why, you say loaded? Well, by that I mean the canes were hollowed out at the bottom ends and filled with some heavy metal, which made them very effective clubs. Oh. Here it is, mister. Get your hands up, up with them. Just cover it from all sides. Unwilling to risk the girl's life in a gun battle with an unknown number of men hidden behind the brush, the masked man raised his arms as did the others. Leighton and his fellow crooks broke from cover. Uh, him, Leighton. Must he get the guns? Right. What's the meaning of this? You'll find out soon enough. <coughs> yeah, I got the masked man's guns. And that takes care of the engine. Take off his mask. Then search the girl. You put your hands on Ruth. You'll do nothing. Take that. Oh, Tim, Tim. Throwing herself to her knees beside the stunned homesteader, Ruth shielded him from the eyes of the killers and snatched her father's revolver from inside his shirt, just as Leighton growled. I'll take that mask off myself. At that instant, Ruth cocked the gun, turned and fired. Her bullet missed Leighton, at whom she had aimed, but hit Bill Strong. Wounded, the crook dropped his weapon and tumbled into the brush where he lay helpless. Leighton turned his gun on the girl. Before he could fire, the Lone Ranger sprang upon him, pinioning his right arm. Let go of that gun. Shoot him, Rusty. Rusty, who had kept his own six-shooter holstered while disarming the masked man and Indian, tried to draw. Then Tonto closed with him and bore him to the ground. While Tonto and Rusty rolled on the ground, the Lone Ranger and Leighton fought on their feet, crashing back and forth through the bushes. The CPA organizer, whose strength almost matched that of the masked man, still clung to his coat. Oh, my arm! You're breaking my arm! Drop that gun! The struggle took the two men ever closer to the brink of the precipice. In a desperate effort to free himself, the crook made a lunge that carried him to the very edge. For a moment, they swayed there. Look out! Look out! With one foot over the edge, the Lone Ranger let go of Leighton's arm. But he was too late to save either himself or the killer. He slid from the rim rock with his face to the cliff. Leighton fell headlong, clawing the air. Oh, no. Forcing herself to the brink of the frightful precipice, the girl peered down. Six feet below, she saw the masked man clinging to a bush he had managed to grasp as he fell. He was kicking the face of the cliff, trying to find something to support his feet. Hold on, I'll get one of your ropes. You won't have time. The bush is pulling out. I can't reach your hand, but here's the cane. Grab hold. I have it, but you can't support my weight alone. I'll try. I just came to... What happened while you're lying there? The masked man, he's down there. Help me hold this cane. Yeah. There, I've got a grip on it. I'll I... try to get a foothold on this bush. The bush pulled out. It's gone. Oh, pull, Tim, pull. I'm pulling as hard as I can. Yeah. Yeah, got him up a foot or so. Cane's breaking. Oh, Let me help you. Get down beside us. Maybe you can reach him with your hand now. Give me your other hand, Kimo Sabi. There. He's got good grip. Now all together. The combined efforts of the two men and girl brought the Lone Ranger to the top of the cliff. A moment later, he scrambled over the rim rock to safety. Extending a hand to Ruth, he said, Miss Dillon, I owe you my life. Please accept this small token of a gratitude too great for words. Thank you, mister. It's a lucky thing you had me get that cane you're picking up. Hey, look at the thing. It's almost busted. I'll finish breaking it. it the end is hollow. There's a paper in it. Yes, I'm getting it out. There. Otto, look after Rust and the other crook while I read this. Ah, me take care of him. Tim, that must be the evidence they had found. What is it, mister? It's a letter written on association stationery. The sign of the noose is printed at the top. It's addressed to Bill Strong and signed by Lance Layton. What does it say? It contains an order for Strong to return to Cottonwood City and lead a raid on this ranch with Rusty's help. Since a rider was killed here, that's enough to hang those two even though they escaped punishment for Mr. Dillon's murder. I'll tell you more in a moment. 
How do you suppose the masked man knew there was something in that cane? I'll bet that piece of lead told him. Your dad must have taken it out of that cane so he could hide the letter. Of course. I remember now of hearing it said that the cane was leaded. The remainder of the letter provides positive proof that the Cattlemen's Protective Association was organized for the sole purpose of defrauding its members. They bought protection from Layton's own gunman. And then blamed us hill folks. A couple of homesteaders were sent to prison on their perjured testimony. This letter should free them. It should also bring about the end of the association and the misunderstanding between cattlemen and people who want to farm or raise sheep. I reckon Leighton is dead. No man could have survived such a fall. He got them two fellas bandaged in time. Good. They weren't the only fellas who helped Leighton. The names of the rest of the crooks will surely be found in Leighton's office records. If you get those, I'm sure you and the sheriff will be able to put all the crooks in jail. We'll see that none get away, mister. Why, there's the sheriff now. He's leading a posse along the other side of the river. It will be quite a while before they find a place to cross. Oh, Miss Dillon, when the sheriff gets here, will you give him this note and explain what happened? Yes, of course. But are you leaving? Yes, I prefer not to be asked to make explanations. My presence might be confusing to the sheriff and his party. So, come on, Toto. Adios, Tim. Adios, Adios mister. Adios. Adios. Adios, engine. Ruth, what was it that masked man gave you? A silver bullet. A, a silver bullet? Jumping John Rogers. Tim, does it mean something to you? Oh, I should say it does. I've heard of a man who gives bullets like that to people he likes. Our friend is the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Boy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.